Shalom. All praises, honor, and glorification unto our mighty, marvelous, and wonderful power. Call Halimla Alahayanawa Yehawa Bahashem, Yehawashai Bahashem, Raka Kadash. Double honors unto the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations as well as health and wellness unto the hopeful elect of Yehawa Bahashem Yehawashai scattered across the earth. This is your brother Ayla coming to you with another lesson. And the title of this lesson will be containing the fear of the Lord is exceedingly vital. Right? And uh, Lord will and elect of Yahweh by Shemi, I wish I be edified. And let's get right into it. You know, so first and foremost, I want to look up the definition of the word vital. <laughs> Right, and you see it says absolutely necessary or important, essential, right? And the fear of the Lord is essential within life, man. Within this truth, you know? Right, so uh, let's see... Um, Let's see. So let me get the book of Psalms, the 34th chapter. <clears throat> let me turn this light on. Yep. All right. The book of Psalms, chapter 34, and verse 7. And it reads, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. You see that? And in these times, only the elect are going to be delivered. <laughs> Right, but one of the attributes that the elect contain is the fear of the Lord, man. Right, there are certain attributes that, you know, um, are indicators of the elect. Right, because there's because there are certain things that the elect will be doing in within these times, and one of them is fearing the Lord. <clears throat> right, as the scriptures say, serve the Lord with fear. All right, let's get that. Psalms 2 and 11, and it reads, Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. You see? <laughs> Which brings my mind to uh, that scripture where it says, uh, Knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 11. And it reads, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto the Most High, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Right? So now let's get the book of Job, chapter 28 and verse 28. And he reads, And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. And so, Lucky, I want to go back to this scripture briefly and I'll make a point. Right, it says, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Right? And another thing is favor is upon those that fear the Lord, man. And that's that's uh that should be one of our main desires is favor of the Lord. Right? And favor and mercy go hand in hand. You know? Right? So uh yeah, you know, just wanted to make that point briefly. So now let me get the book of Psalms 25 and 14. And it reads, The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will shew them his covenant. Right? We also have Psalms 33 and 18. And it reads, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon that. And listen up, this is, this is, um, Fire for lack of a better word. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, 
to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. And we're in times of death and famine, man. Right? So, you know, diverting back to the title of the lesson, containing the fear of the Lord is exceedingly vital. You know? It's necessary for deliverance, man. If you don't fear the Lord, you're fucked and death awaits you. Straight like that, you know? And another thing at which I did a, a lesson entitled this a while back, you know, the fear of the Lord influences, you, influences your actions. <laughs> you know? So let's see what we have. What do we have next? Psalms 34 and 9. And it reads, O fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear the Lord. And let me get that in another translation. Right, Psalms 34 and 9. Let's do the NLT. Right, the book of Psalms, the 34th chapter, verse 9. And it reads, Fear the Lord, you his godly people. For those who fear him will have all they need. See? And that's beautiful, man. You know, that's beautiful. <whistles> right, so let's see. Let's see. Um, Psalms 103 and 13. And it reads, like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. Right? And pitieth meaning have mercy upon. Right? And that's what we need. You know, that's what we need. Jumping down to verse 17, it reads, But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them. Right? Yep, so let me check where we're at. Okay, cool. So now let me get the book of um Psalms one eleven and ten. And it reads the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments, his praise endure forever. See? Right. Let me get, let me see. Yep. This is our wisdom of Solomon 728. And it reads, For the most high loveth none but him that dwelleth with wisdom. Right? And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Right? So the Lord loves those that fear him. You know? So let's see. Uh, what was that? Psalm. I don't know. Wisdom of Solomon. So now let's get Psalms 112. Right? In the book of Psalms, the 112th chapter. In verse 1. And it reads, Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endure forever. <laughs> right, let me keep reading verse 4. Unto the upright there arise of light and darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. Right, and that's it on that. So now let me get the 115th chapter, um, verse 11. And it reads, Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Right? 
See? You see that? He is their help and their shield. Right? And the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh is the source of deliverance. You know? Right? And that, you know, that should be a, um, another one of our, uh, you know, primary desires is to be in favor with the Lord. I mean, Salaki, you're not in favor. Well, that too, but in good graces with the Lord, I meant. Right? Which leads to favor. So let's see uh, Psalms 115 and 13. And it reads, He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. Right? Now let me get the book of Ecclesiasticus. 2 and 20, I believe it is. No. 2 and 10. And it reads, Look at the generations of old and see. Matter of fact, I'll start at uh, 7. And it reads, Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy, and go not aside, lest he fall. Ye that fear the Lord, believe him, and your reward shall not fail. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. Look at the generations of old and see. Did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? Verse 11, For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long-suffering and very pitiful, and forgive of sins, and saveth in time of affliction. Right. What else we got? We got Ecclesiastes, the first chapter, verse 27. And it reads, For the fear of the Lord is wisdom and instruction, and faith and meekness are his delight. Right? Jumping down to verse 20. It reads, The root of wisdom is to fear the Lord, and the branches thereof are long life. You know? So, the, you know, containing the fear of the Lord... Leads to life. Verse 21. The fear of the Lord driveth away sins. And where, is, and where it is present. It turneth away wrath. See. So next we have the 18th verse. And it reads. The fear of the Lord is a crown of wisdom. Making peace and perfect health to flourish. Both which are the gifts of the most high. And it enlargeth their rejoicing that love him. Which love is ultimately about action. You know. Although a bit of emotion is involved with it. But it's primarily action. You could have all of those emotions. But if your actions. You know aren't the acts of love. Then your love is false. You know. So let's see. Uh, so now let's get the 13th verse. And Lord will now end it with that. And it reads, Whoso feareth the Lord, it shall go well with him at the last. And he will find favor in the day of his death. Right? So with that, Lord will you were edified. Once again and forever, all praises, honor, and glorification unto our mighty, marvelous, and wonderful power. Call Halaim La Alahayan Awa Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors unto the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, whom will well once again. Salutations as well as health and wellness unto the hopeful elect of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai scattered across the earth. See you in the next lesson, Lord willing. Wa Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Baba Kasha, Baba Ba. Wa Shalom, DTA, soon as stay sharp. And you sense your Akimwa Akwath keep pushing. Shalom wa barakatam lawalam yam.